everybody, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about and hopefully show you the anatomy of a residential wall system and floor system. So let's take a look. So what I have behind me is a wall trainer, uh, a very simple uh, section of a wall. You can see we have vinyl siding on the outside of this uh, structure. If I go ahead and move this camera back, you can see the vinyl siding runs all the way down to the base of the wall. Now, the base of the wall is actually up here, and this is where the floor system uh, takes over in the house. But from the outside of the house, you really don't see that. You don't see that transition from one to the other. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and slide this wall around. We can start taking a look at the cross section of the wall as if we've taken this and we slice down through this wall with a knife. And now we can look at the uh, interior portions of the wall. So as we come through here, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. At the bottom of the wall, or I should say at the bottom of the floor system, we have a two by six uh, sill plate. This is a pressure treated uh, piece of lumber. Uh, that makes that pressure treated piece of lumber is able to make contact with um, cinder blocks or concrete uh, and the like. This would then be bolted down to the foundation system. As we start coming up from the foundation, we have two uh, pieces of uh, material here. On the um, inside, these are called TJI floor joist. This is a floor joist system that uh, is an engineered piece of lumber. You can see inside here, this is very similar to what the outside of the house looks like when you start looking at the outside of the house material. All right, that's oriented strand board known as OSB. This is the same type of material. This is an oriented strand board OSB that has been uh, engineered, designed, and then manufactured so that you can see there is a piece of two by material on the bottom. That OSB then actually then is inside of, uh, rabbited inside of the uh, piece of two by at the top. So this is a very rigid, also uh, known as an I joist beam or a TJI beam. Now, dimensional lumber can still be used here. Uh, two by tens, two by twelves are generally uh, common. In this particular system, being a TJI system, on the outside of this house, we have the outside band. The outside band of the house runs around the entire perimeter and creates the outside uh, portion of the floor system. Okay. As we keep moving up, we have our subfloor. This subfloor is a Vantex, also a OSB style material, oriented strand board. And the thickness of this material is three quarters of an inch. As we continue up the wall, we have the bottom plate of our wall. This is also uh, can be called the sill of the wall, but generally called the bottom plate of the wall. Coming up, you can now start to see we have a uh, what is called a stud. This is a two by four wall stud that runs all the way up the wall to the double top plate. All right. So at the top here, we have a double top plate system. This double top plate system is what allows the load from any of the uh, roof or floor systems above to be transferred down to the studs and then down through uh, to the floor system. Working our way, we'll go from the inside out here. What we have on the inside is gypsum wall board. This is a uh, gypsum wall board that is a half inch thick. Gypsum wall board is uh, gypsum rock that has been pulverized uh, and then is extruded uh, with uh, paper facing on both sides. Very common used uh, interior wall board uh, has a, a resistance to fire uh, is what's generally used on the inside of homes. As we start looking at the outside, on the outside of this house, on the wall, you can see that we have a piece of sheathing. This is generally referred to as OSB, as you've heard me say many times here now, oriented strand board OSB. And the thickness of this piece of material is a half of an inch for our purposes in Revit. But if you were to order it from a lumber yard, they'd call it nine sixteenths. All right. But half inch is fine as far as the uh, common term uh, for what we're going to use in Revit. Now, you can also see, and this is important to, to no take note of, the OSB or sheeting on the outside of this house lines up with a piece of sheeting that runs down the outside of the floor system all the way down past the sill plate. This piece of sheeting that runs past creates a drainage plane all the way down the outside of the house that the house wrap 
will then run down past. <clears throat> now, this particular uh, structure, this house wrap has been cut because this is our wall trainer. You can see that this wall system run, moves off of the top of this. Um, this house wrap would generally then overlap all the way down or if there is a cut in the house wrap that then is sealed with house wrap tape. The house wrap on the outside of the house is a complete sealed membrane in theory, a complete sealed membrane that would not allow water to pass through and also keeps wind from working its way through the house in nooks, crannies and crevices. So the house wrap is a very important uh, barrier for wind and moisture. Now we start taking a look at the rest of the system here. We're going to take a look at the vinyl siding. So let me go ahead and tilt this wall a little bit. So as we start looking at the vinyl siding, uh, as we saw here in the beginning, the vinyl siding starts down here on the floor system and then runs all the way up the wall. The corner system is what receives the ends of the vinyl siding. This corner would actually run all the way down to uh, the foundation. Uh, in this particular system, I don't have that set up that way simply so that I can remove this top section of the wall from the bottom of the section of the wall uh, so I can move it around. It's a little easier to manage. So we'll go ahead here and we'll take off the siding and start taking a look at what's really inside of this wall. All right. So this vinyl siding would attach to that uh, starter strip and then work its way up. We have that sheeting that would go past. All right. And then this is the outside drainage plane for your house wrap. Now let's start taking a look at what's inside of these walls. Inside uh, these cavities, you'll see you have uh, insulation. Now, this particular insulation is called uh, fiberglass bat insulation. As I pull it back here, you can kind of look at it. It kind of looks like cotton candy. And what fiberglass insulation does is it helps resist the flow of hot and cold through the wall. This is what allows you to keep heat in and cold out and vice versa, depending on the season. What's happening with the studs in relationship to the thermal insulation and a barrier system is whatever the R value is of these particular studs, and that's the resistance to the heat transfer, whatever that R value is for wood, that's what's happening from one side of this wall to the other, the thickness of the stud all the way through this house, thickness of the stud all the way through, all the way up to the sill plate. So as you can see, all the surface area of every single one of these particular framing members, studs, whether it's a, a sill plate, any of these particular members, if there is not insulation there and it runs from one side of the wall to the other, that's a bridge. And that's considered a thermal bridge, meaning hot and cold can transfer through this particular member, given whatever the, the heat transfer coefficient is for that particular member. In this cavity, the insulation helps stop that transfer of heat. Let's go ahead and we're going to flip this wall around so we can start taking a look at the other side. Okay, now that I got this wall spun around, you can take a look at, there's a double top plate, and then here's the insulation. On the front face of this insulation, this is called craft facing, okay? This is a uh, paper membrane uh, that is coated on the back side. You can see there's a coating on the back side, it's a black coating, that helps to stop the transfer of moisture through this wall. So moisture has a tendency to work its way out of a building if it's warm on the inside and there's moisture on the inside of the building it wants to work its way out of the building now how does moisture get into a wall well if you have a cutout in the wall for a light switch or uh, a receptacle or anything like that if that's not sealed moisture can get into that wall and then it wants to work its way into the wall it's being pushed by the heat of the structure through this wall this helps stop that transfer of moisture okay it's very important so we don't get moisture trapped in our wall so we don't have moisture trapped in these cavities. That would cause uh, rotting, it would cause uh, mold, and uh, issues of that nature. All right, well, I hope that this little run through of a residential wall structure helps you understand a little bit better what we're looking to create in Revit and how that relates to the actual buildings create and draw.